How do you write a research paper but not make it sound stuffy and boring? I'm Dr. Jia from Publish MD. I will share three key elements of good academic writing that you can apply today. Good academic writing is about telling a good scientific story. The better you tell the story in a research paper, the easier it is for the readers and the reviewers to understand. Confusing your reviewer will increase the chance of your paper getting rejected, and you don't want that. There are three elements that make good academic writing. Number one, be clear. Number two, be concise. And number three, be precise. And I will show you how to incorporate them into your manuscript. Number one, be clear. Being clear means easy to understand. Writing clearly is like giving good directions to somebody. You have to give instructions step by step and in the right order. But you can't expect the person to remember every street and corner. So another way is to use signposts or landmarks that are easy to recognize to help give the direction. How do you apply that for your research paper? Give instructions in the right order. This is particularly important in the introduction section. Here you have to walk the readers through the problem and what has been done before and why more research needs to be done. Do not assume that your readers will know all the middle steps to get to the problem or the solution. When you are doing research in a very niche or subspecialty field and you do that research all the time, it is easy to start thinking that other people are familiar with your research or familiar with the condition you're studying. But when you're submitting your research paper into a more general field, then you have to put yourself in the shoes of the readers of your target journal. Next, use signposts or landmarks to guide your reader. The equivalent of the signpost or landmark in a research paper is the headings and subheadings. Make sure you follow the conventional frameworks of your research paper. If you're publishing a paper in a medical field, it typically follows the IMRAD structure. That is, introduction, methods, results and analysis, and discussion. Scientific readers know what to expect in each section. So if you talk about the results section in a method, it will throw your readers off. Next, how do you use signposts to guide your readers in the paragraph? Make sure you use a topic sentence. A topic sentence is typically the first sentence of each paragraph that introduce what you will be talking about in the rest of the paragraph. All the middle sentences will need to serve the topic sentence. You will want to include more details or provide more examples or evidence from other research papers. Next, be concise. Concise means short and to the point. How do you do that? In general, cut big, then cut small. Take out big chunks of irrelevant paragraphs first. Where do you see fluff? Typically in the introduction and discussion section. Remember, the introduction section in a research paper is not a literature review, but an introduction of the research gap, research problem, what the field has done, and how your research aim plans to solve the problem. In the discussion section is where you can be more concise. The mistake I've done and what I've seen many people do is to summarize a different research study into one whole paragraph. Instead of dedicating a whole paragraph summarizing one research paper, you should only pull up one or two key findings that either support your research finding or contradicts your research finding. And remember, the hero of that paragraph should be your own key study finding. Next, remove irrelevant sentences. How do you do that? Remember the topic sentence we talked about earlier? Always go back to your topic sentence. And when you do that, go through the middle sentences in a paragraph and see if they serve the topic sentence. If not, you can take them out. Next, avoid lengthy expressions. These are some examples that I've seen. As far as I'm concerned, you can delete that. As a matter of fact, delete that. In the event that, change it to if, put up with, tolerate. What are the topics about academic writing would you like me to cover? Leave me a comment below. I would love to hear from you. Number three, be precise. Precise means exact and accurate. What I mean by that is to use specific word instead of a general one. Note that certain words have different meaning depending on the context. A common one is significant. When you read a newspaper or blog post, when you see the word significant, it could mean many things. It could mean important, large, meaningful, or serious. 
But when in research paper, we usually mean statistically significant. There we are talking about p-values. Another example, sensitivity. Sensitivity in general could mean how somebody perceives something, allergic to food. But in research papers, depending on the research you do, the term sensitivity is a measurement of how well a test can detect true positives. Next, be careful with pronouns. Specify what and who you're referring to. When you see the terms there is, this, and that, ask yourself, is it clear to the reader what I'm referring to? Who do they mean? The study authors, the research community, or the field of medicine? I know conducting research from the start to the end is an overwhelming process. I made an idea to paper blueprint for you. The blueprint takes you through the seven step process from idea generation to paper submission. Be sure to get a copy by clicking on the link below. The three key elements of good academic writing include be clear, be concise, and be precise. I want you to start implementing them today. But if you find yourself procrastinating, watch this video on how to overcome procrastination. I will see you in the next video.